this vlog, I'm going to show images of metachromatic lycodystrophy, which is very rare, like all lycodystrophies, with a birth incidence of 1 in 40,000. On imaging, there is extensive white matter involvement with sparing of the periventricular area and sparing of the perivascular perivenular white matter, giving it a thyroid pattern on the MR slices at the level of the corona radiata. And if you go higher up, you see the dots, which give it a leopard pattern. On post-contrast T1-weighted imaging, there is no inflammatory component and no enhancement of the white matter, but you can see some striped enhancement perivascular, which looks like dots and a leopard pattern on the sagittal images. There are different forms of metachromatic lycodystrophy. The infantile form is the most common one, which has a very bad disease cause. Then there's the juvenile form and more and more the adult form is identified because of the increase in imaging and if you see symmetrical white matter involvement in adults without a vascular pattern, you should always do metabolic testing to rule out leukodystrophies. And in metachromatic leukodystrophy, the anterior white matter is involved first. There are different mutations in the RSI gene and the Mutation and the combination of mutations, because it's an autosomal recessive disease, can predict the form of metachromatic lycodystrophy. And this gene is involved in the lipid metabolism, and especially of the sulfur-containing lipids, which are about 10% of the lipids in the myelin sheet. And if you have slices of affected white matter in patients with metachromatic lycodystrophy examined under the microscope after coloring them with a staining Cresel violet. The sulfatides that have accumulated in the cells have this reaction and this gives a color change, so the metachromasia of from violet to brown. So that's the reason why it's named metachromatic lycodystrophy. There's early sparing of the subcortical U-fibers in metachromatic lycodystrophy, and that is because the microglial cells are affected early. And in the white matter, there are different cells, and each cell has a different task. And the myelin and the lipid has to be turned over and recycled continuously. And this has been assigned to the microglial cells. And because the subcortical U-fibers have a low myelin turnover rate, they are spared early in the disease. We also saw that in X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, which was also early microglial involvement. If you look at a cellular level in X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, the peroxisome was involved which took care of the fatty metabolism, whereas in metachromatic lycodystrophy, there's a problem with the lysosome, and that's the garbage system of the cell. And if you look at the different areas of the white matter in metachromatic lycodystrophy, so the pre-lesional area, the transient area, the early gliosis and the advanced gliosis, in the pre-lesional area, there is normal myelin and normal oligodendrocytes, but the microglial cells have already changed morphologically, so that is why we call it an early microglial disease. And the lysosomes in the microglial cells are this membrane-bound organelle with a close relation with the mitochondria, and they accumulate all these sulfur that cannot be degraded in metachromatic leukodystrophy. If you look 
to the different areas under the microscope. You have the pre-lesional area stained for myelin basic protein with a lot of myelin and the early gliotic area which is not nearly as brown as the pre-lesional area so there's a lot of myelin loss and you zoom in to the macrophages and macroglial cells you can see that in the pre-lesional area the macrophages already look different and the microglial cells as well you see all these vesicles and they're probably lysosomes with the sulfides stored in them some of them are located perivascular as you can see here and if you look at the early gliotic area you can see that they have fused you have this big cell which is very dysmorphic with racked borders so it's a lysosomal problem and a microglial problem first and later on the other components of the white matter are affected the reason that there is perivascular enhancement and a thyroid pattern is because it is spared because there's some myelin preservation in the perivascular areas and also some lipid storage and in the top differential diagnosis from metachromatic glycodystrophy both from a clinical and a radiological point of view is Krabbe's disease which also has a thyroid appearance of the white matter and we're gonna look at that in the next vlog so thanks for